Over 86% of you are not subscribed, so if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and set it to all, because if you don't, you won't get notified for all of my videos. We're trying to hit 600 subscribers so we can move on to the next Pretty Kill Let's Play. So without further ado, let's try to make this happen. So almost two years ago, I made my top 10 favorite Pretty Cure Seasons video, and I really appreciate the feedback on it. But the best part of the video was actually seeing people considering Happiness Charge as an enjoyable season, and to all of you who thinks that, I could not agree more. Happiness Charge deserves more love, and I will continue to make sure that it does. If you haven't already, go check out parts 1 through 3 of my Happiness Charge review. I'm working on part 4 right now, so it should be out in mid or late September. Now I would remake the list because, like I said on Twitter, which you should follow, after finishing Tropical Rouge, I can confidently say that it now ranks in my top 5. But I need to give it some more time. Maybe in a few years I'll remake my list, because it makes no sense to remake it at this point if every year is going to have a pretty good season. So only time will tell. Now I've given you my top 10 favorite pretty good seasons. So it only makes sense to take the good with the bad. Goki Genyo everyone, the Starlight Let's Player is here, and today I'm going to be counting down my top 5 worst Pretty Cure seasons. These are the seasons that I consider either boring, bad, mediocre, or straight up terrible. Now before we go into this, I need to put a disclaimer here, because some of you have no chill when it comes to stuff like this. If your favorite season is on this list, do not get on my ass for putting them on this list. Because at the end of the day, these are all my opinions. It's okay for you to disagree, but it's not okay to consider my opinions wrong. I have every right to feel how I feel about these five seasons, and I can respect your opinions as long as you respect mine. If you can't, the dislike button is on the right, so you won't forget. Now that we've gotten that disclaimer out of the way, let's jump right into this. Oh yeah, I'm saying it. Healing Good is my fifth worst Pretty Cure season of all time. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That is extremely crazy to be considered one of the worst, but that's just how I feel. I guess I can start with some positives first. Chiyu and Hinata are my favorite cures in this season. Chiyu pretty much has the best character development, and even though Hinata didn't get much development, at least she's gotten some screen time, and she's my number one favorite in this season. Even if a character doesn't get much development, it doesn't matter as long as that character is enjoyable. And I think Hinata is someone that I enjoyed. She got quite the quirky personality, plus her cure form is amazing. I also like the fairies in this season, specifically Pegaton, Nietzolin, and Latte. Pegaton is an intelligent yet shy Pingu fairy who looks pipple up from Pokemon. Nietzolin's the cute cool cat with a free spirited attitude. And Latte is the sweet pupper who can't speak, but does have her inner voice when they use a stethoscope. Now as far as the villains go, Dozen's the best one. He's pretty lazy, but with a cool vibe. And lastly, the music is pretty nice. I mostly enjoy the first ending theme sung by Machiko, but the second theme by Kaneko Miyamoto slaps too. Now, why is this season on the list? Well, firstly, the story felt so boring to me. I just couldn't connect with it. I mean, this was supposed to be on the level of Splash Star, considering that they both kind of share the same theme. Not to mention Splash Star being in my top three favorite seasons. But it just didn't hit the right spot for me. Secondly, Azumi was such a generic Sixth Ranger to me. She didn't really stand out to me for my, that much. The only thing that stood out, but in a ridiculous way, is that she's a purple cure, yet her name is Cure Earth. Really? If she were green or both blue and green, then it would make sense. Plus, her debut as Cure Earth felt so lackluster to me. Legendary Pretty Cure being born out of a statue. Yeah, that wasn't much of a grand debut compared to Cosmos or even Lemurs. And lastly, the final confrontation between Grace and Dyrosin. I know a lot of you disagreed with my opinion on this, which is perfectly fine, but I still stand by what I said. Grace should have purified Dairuzen in the same way that Hugger So and Happiness Charge did it. 
or like how they did Shinduin. And I need to make this clear since some of you have misinterpreted what I said about Robin. I am not saying that she is wrong for what she said. I said that she should have thought this through a bit more. In no way is she wrong for what she said, but it was at the wrong time because King Biogen was on a hunt for Daiuzen so he can absorb him to become more powerful. That's why I said the Curious should have prevented this from happening. They don't have to redeem him. They don't have to forgive him. But they should have helped him and kept King Biogen from getting stronger. Needless to say, this was this was the worst episode I have ever watched. And I hate to say this, but thanks to this episode along with the aggressiveness from some of the fans, it pretty much ruined my view on Grace. Never mind the fact that she's a pink haired cure flora. Hell, even her personality and good nature was amazing. But when this episode aired, she pretty much dropped down to being my third favorite, with Fontaine taking that second spot. And the reason why this season is so low on this list is because I'm willing to go easy on it since this aired in 2020, the year where the pandemic happened. It's not a terrible season, but this was a major step down from 2019 season, starts looking pretty cure. It's just another season that I don't want to revisit. I will say that Doki Doki has a few charms to it. Mana may be a Mary Sue, but she's one that's been done right. Plus, Rika, Alice, and Makoto each has their time to shine. I also think the fairies were pretty entertaining as well. And the music is good to listen to. Since Kanako Miyamoto's The Voice of Cure Sword, it was obvious that she was going to have more solo songs than the other four. But Beyond the Sky by Hitomi Yoshida? Easily my favorite pretty good theme of all time. But what does good music and main character mean if the story felt so all over the place. Collect all the royal crystals, head to the royal kingdom to save the princess, have all four of the cures go through their trials and tribulations, trying to bring Regina back to her senses. This season has a lot of arcs to go through. Now my whole girls pretty much had the same issue with having multiple missions and small arcs, but the world building aspect pretty much made up for that kind of issue. And in Doki Doki's case, there is no world building, and the end result became nothing but a mediocre experience. Not to mention that the villains ain't on the level of great. Granted, I do like the concept of these villains. They represented the seven deadly sins. Ira's theme is wrath, Marmo's theme is greed, Bell's theme is sloth, Regina's theme is lust, Leva's theme is envy, Gullah's theme is gluttony, and King Selfish's theme is pride. But out of all seven of these villains, Ira, Marmo, and Bell ended up being the only three to survive against the cures. Not to mention Ira and Marmo being more entertaining than the other five. Seriously, King Selfish felt so underwhelming. He was originally King Trump and when his daughter Marie Ange fell ill due to an unknown illness, he decided to use the eternal golden crown to save her. He was very aware of the consequences that might happen if he decides to do this as it would end up being a selfish choice that could lead to the downfall of the royal kingdom. But he ends up using it anyway, but at the cost of all the evil energy being released with him being consumed by it. And that's how he became the Selfish King. As a backstory, it works pretty well. As a villain, King Selfish felt so uninteresting. He did not strike a chord with me, and is definitely on the same level of bland as the Dark King. And I get the backstory between Ace and Regina, but unlike Regina, Ace pretty much came out of nowhere. No explanation when this happened after Regina was corrupted once again. She just shows up, defeats her, and then take Mana's lovey. And it isn't until episode 46 where Augury tells them the backstory of Ange and how she was separated into the two. That being Augury and Regina. Both characters are revealed to be sisters. Now the build up to the showdown was pretty good and well executed. But even with all of that, Augury had no build up in her character. Not on the same level of bad as Machiri, but she's just an okay cure to me. Doki Doki felt so uninteresting to me, and I'm not really seeing the appeal of it. It just didn't really do it for me. I only have a few positives to say about Sweet Pretty Cure. Firstly, the music is very good to listen to, mainly the ending themes, Wonderful Powerful Music, and Hope Rainbow both performed by Aya Ikeda. Secondly, I like Homie. She's an adorable cat fairy with an airhead-like personality. And lastly, it brought the second best six ranger, Cure Muse, as well as Cure Beat, who I also think is amazing. She's not one of the best, but her contribution to the team is enough for me to consider her my favorite of the four. I wish I could say the same for Melody and Rhythm though. They obviously need each other to stand a chance because 
They're not that strong individually in my eyes. They have the individual attacks and finishers, but their strength doesn't compare to Black and White, Bloom and Egret, Blossom and Marine, hell, not even Miracle and Magical, or Lovely and Princess. As a duo, they feel so generic when compared to their peers. They do have their funny moments at times. Hi, excuse me. Where's the post office? Post office? Post office? Go straight! But that's about it, and as far as the story goes, it's yet another collectathon type of plot. Hummy was sent out on a mission to find all the scattered notes of the Melody of Happiness with the help of Hibiki and Kanade, while also trying to prevent Mephisto and Trio the Minor from completing the Melody of Sorrow. It really didn't click for me, and Trio the Minor were a lame trio with mediocre writing. In the moment when Mephisto was purified of evil, with Falsetto taking his place as the main antag for 8 episodes, was when I couldn't care that much anymore, because I thought Mephisto as a villain was good enough, and he's still a great character, good or evil, but again, I just could not care much about the three generals. But let's get this out of the way, I don't like the emphasis on collectathons being the main part of the story because they can really drag on for so long and it can be atrocious when it's not handled properly. You know why I didn't like it in Smile and Maho Girls and this is no exception here. Now there are some seasons that's done it well like Futaruwa, Yes5, and Star Twinkle but that's about it. This is just a, another season that I don't really feel myself going back into unless I want to review it. This season did not need it to be the 5th anniversary season. Actually, before I continue on that, the 20th anniversary needs to be in 2024. I am not a fan of what Toei has been doing with these Predicure anniversaries. And this is the same company that got it right with Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball, and One Piece when it comes to anniversaries. Now, putting that aside, I'm pretty split on its existence. On one hand, Yes5 didn't need a sequel since their stories have pretty much wrapped up but on the other hand, without it, Milky Rose wouldn't be a thing, and I love Milky Rose. She may not be one of my favorite six rangers, but she's definitely my second best cure in Gogo -Go behind Kill Rouge. And the same goes for Syrup. He's an orange bird fairy, but has the ability to turn into a giant bird, as well as a human. He's a delivery boy with the help of his companion Melpo. However, he suffers from amnesia and decided to stick with Nozomi and company so he can have his memories restored. Both of these characters are amazingly well written, and from what I've researched, there were plans of having Komachi and Karen graduate, with Nozomi, Ren, and Urara having two members of the team. But that was scrapped because Takashi Washio, the producer of GoGo, -Go, stated that Predicure 5 can only be the original five members. Thank God that plan was scrapped because I wouldn't get to experience the best GoGo -Go song from these two. Seriously, Child's Play is legit one of the best duo songs I have ever heard in this entire franchise. And once again, the ending themes slap. Hand in Hand by Kanago Miyamoto and the third Gambales Day Dance version, Relay of Hope by the Kill Quartet, which consists of Miami Gojo, Yuka Uchie, Mayu Kudo, as well as Kanago Miyamoto. Now, as far as the villains go, come on, obviously Bun B, Scorp, and Akandi are the highlight villains of this season. Everyone else is just straight up fodder, and the main antag, a boss, didn't strike a chord with me, as well as the story. Now we'll give it points since the main mission is for them to find and retrieve the four rulers of the Palmyra Kingdom, but in the end, it's just another plot that I couldn't connect with. The new designs on the cures are okay, but they're nothing compared to its predecessor. Out of the six, Milky Rose has the best design. Like I mentioned before, what does good music and characters mean if everything else fails to deliver? At least the other three seasons that I've mentioned on this list has something going, but this one fails as a sequel. At least Max Hart actually did it better with it as a sequel, and the fact that this season nearly cost the Predicure's lifespan isn't helping much. Nowhere near as good as his predecessor. However, that doesn't compare to the number one spot, and you all know what that is.
Look, you all knew this season was going to be at number one. Now, I've tried to be fair with the bottom four seasons, but 90% of this season is just awful. And I've had a few new people who respectfully asked why I consider Huggerso the worst. Now, if you're also wondering why, I'll explain in soon a bit, but there are a few positives. Uh, Lulu and Homare both have the, some of the best character development. Henry becoming Cure Anthony was amazing despite the late appearance. And I love how the show took notes from Happiness Charge by purifying all the villains. And the fighting scenes are phenomenal. And once again, I like the second opening, Yell For You. But everything else is just straight up awful. The story has bad pacing and, block and plot holes due to the time travel plot device. Emru was shoehorned into the plot with no solo buildup, so I don't think she earned the particular status in my opinion, as I said before. The All-Stars 2 episode arc felt unnecessary and was only there for hype. Not to mention how it made the pacing and the story even worse. Was it really necessary to tie it into the story? I don't think so. There were also questionable scenes that I did not enjoy. From the burst scenes to the DISGUSTING Marilyn Monroe reference! What the hell were they even thinking with that one? And Hana's character hasn't been utilized well. I get her backstory and all that, but I do wish they could have done a better job with her character. And the original soundtracks weren't that great, the opening theme isn't that great. Again, I prefer hearing Kaneko Miyamoto on the ending themes, insert songs, and album tracks. This one right here was not it, so having heard to do the opening was... I can, I can admit they were trying to do something different, but that doesn't mean it's going to be good. It was To me, it was just a failed experiment to me. And the final battle was so disappointing, because I really wanted it, the whole fight to be completely solo. Just Yell vs Kurai and we're golden. And all the citizens becoming cures was stupid, despite me understanding the message of the second final episode. Look, there's really a lot to talk about when it comes to Hugger Soul, and we'd be here all day if I continue, so I'll save the rest of my ammo when I get to it in this own video. This is easily the worst Predator season I have ever watched. You know, say what you want about Happiness Charge and Star Twinkle, but this season fails to be good or decent. Well, that's the video. Those are my top 5 worst Predator seasons of all time. I know some of you are going to get on my ass for one or two of these inclusions, but I tried my best to be fair with most of these seasons. And my apologies if I sounded a bit pissed during the Grace and Dyrusen situation. It just bothers me that people can't seem to have a calm and mature combo without it making it into a whole argument. An aggressive one to be precise. Like I said before, I can respect your opinions as long as you can respect mine. So by all means, comment down below your worst pretty good season. I like to know. Hell, I might even respond to some of you. Just to remind y'all, once we get to 600 subs, the next Pretty Kill Let's Play will begin. So if you want that to happen, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Uh, but until then, this is the Starlight Let's Player signing out. As always, Goki Genyo, and have a star-tastic day, everyone. I knew I would fulfill my dream, yeah They knew I started from the bottom, now I made it, yeah The possibilities are endless, yeah, I say, yeah I got the rules and I got everything I need, yeah And now I'm chilling with a pretty gentle lady, yeah She got a kind of gentle personality, yeah She got them curvy hips and a booty for booty